So, you know, we, we had a lot of uh, questions submitted throughout the week in regards to, in regards to relationships, and, and, and we wanted to make sure that we took some time to answer those questions. And so, so let's go ahead and, 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 you know, just kind of share some wisdom and some insight on, uh, you know, just some of the questions that were answered. And so thank you guys again, you know, for taking a moment to, uh, to submit some of these questions. I think, uh, I think that they were good questions and, can, uh, and, and hopefully we can give you some good insight. And so, so here's one question. You know, a couple that's been married for, you know, many years, you know, uh, over 20 years, and, and, and they kind of want to know, is it, is it normal in a marriage for, um, you know, for a spouse not to say, uh, I love you? You know, so one of the spouses says, I love you, and, and the other spouse doesn't uh, necessarily, I love you. They show affection, mm -hmm. but don't really share those words. Uh, what, do, what do you think? I mean, as far as normally you would like for your spouse to reciprocate you know the feelings that you have but it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have those feelings uh, it just may mean that their expression of whatever they're feeling in their heart is difficult for them if it's the male that's not expressing their affection it can be a, it's a typical thing you know but I think that when you have an open communication with your spouse that it helps they may not even know that it's bothering you and so if you have a time, let him relax or let her relax, get to the end of the day or, you know, somewhere where they don't feel def defensive and just express to them, you know, honey, I, you know, I love you and I need to, I need to hear that back, yeah, you know, absolutely. I need to know how you feel and I appreciate you and I appreciate the ways that you love me, but um, my love language is words and words of affirmation. So I need to hear, I need to hear that from you, from you. You know, time. Yeah. I'm not saying every second you get to text me every minute, but um, you know, I think it's mm -hmm. important to have an open communication to let them know. They may not even know. Yeah, I think so. I think for sure, uh, expressing yourself that you know, expressing yourself to your spouse that, that that's something that that uh, you would like to hear, and and you have every right to hear that. Matter of fact, let me say it like this: if you are married, it is imp it is important that you tell each other you love each other. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so take every opportunity that you can to express, I love you. Mm -hmm. And it does mean a lot. Those, those three words are very significant and they do mean a lot. And I know you and I share it with each other often, mm -hmm. you know, whether, you know, daily, you know, pretty daily we tell each other we love each other and uh, whether it's verbally or it's via text, oftentimes before I go to bed at night, you know, before I go to bed or whatever, I'll text, say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the day I'll text you, I love you. And, uh, and so yes, um, you know, sometimes, yes, males, sometimes men can sometimes have a hard time expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I do definitely encourage the men, men, do it. You know, whatever it takes, make sure you tell your, your, your wife you love her. And, um, and then also, uh, but you know, you know, sometimes, you know, it's good to express yourself and let them know what you need to hear. So, yes, yes. so good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Here's another question. And um, uh, my spouse has, uh, has, you know, cheated on me. Uh, multiple times in, in the past um, they've forgiven them mm -hmm. um, however you know they, they, they would like to know and, and this is uh, you know it looks like that the husband had cheated on the, uh, had, you know had a relationship outside of the marriage mm -hmm. obviously a very difficult circumstance whenever a spouse goes outside of the marriage mm -hmm. uh, through some type of adulterous relationship it, it, it's very uh, very profound the impact of the hurt of that is very deep. The wounds go very, very deep. Uh, it's a significant violation of trust and, and respect and, and all kinds of things that really uh, hurt an individual and, it, and, and it's very challenging. But to answer one of the questions, is it, is it, it, can it be restored? Can God restore a relationship that has experienced some type of unfaithfulness? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. God can. With God, all things are possible. God is a God who heals. He is a God who restores. Uh, you know, you and I have seen many marriages mm -hmm. who have gone down this path where there's been unfaithfulness, whether it was the husband or the wife who was unfaithful, and, and they've been able to find healing and restoration, and their marriages are stronger today mm -hmm. uh, because they were willing to work through it. Yeah. Now, with that said, it, 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 it takes two. Right, it, it's not a one-way street. It, it it definitely takes two people 
uh, saying, hey, we want our relationship to work. We want it to be restored mm -hmm. again. Uh, it, it, it's not enough for one person. It's got to be two people mm -hmm. that, that are willing to fight for that. Now, one can pray and one can believe and one can stand and, and, and believe and hope for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need two people working at it to help that relationship heal and to be restored. Yeah. And so, so that's number one. But you would agree, of course. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, but it will take work. And so, you know, both on both parties. For the one who was cheated on, you need to, there's some healing that has to happen. And there's not gonna be anything that your spouse can do or not do that's gonna make you completely whole and healed. You have to take some of those things to Christ and say, God, heal my heart of these, you know, um, these, these actions that have been, you know, taken against me. And so you have to, you have to get that healing can your spouse help you heal? Absolutely. By making sure that you're not interacting with females or the opposite sex on social media. Those are, those are no-nos. When you're married, you are no, there is no DMs anymore. You know, like there is no, um, my BFF is, a, is this person or that person and we're just gonna be BF. You know, it, it's, you need to make sure that your marriage is, is safe, you know, from all types of the lion's den stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so I definitely, as far as friendships go, we always recommend, especially in situations like this, that okay, some of those things are gonna have to get cut. And if you really want to, mar to work on this relationship and work on this marriage, then you need to meet those needs for each other. And you have to be like, all right, I'm not comfortable with that, then all right, well then we'll let's cut. You either share a social media account or you have each other's passwords. Yeah, I think, uh, again, when, when there is a violation of trust and unfaithfulness in a marriage, uh, the person who, who did the wrong is has to do a lot of work to re-earn that trust again. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to step up to the plate. And with God's help, you can do it. Mm -hmm. With God's help, you can do it. You ask God to help you to re-earn that trust, and, and, and it can happen. And, and while you do that, you pray for your spouse that God would help to heal your spouse's uh, hurt in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely got to re-earn that trust. And like you said, if it takes cutting social media off, and we, we, we definitely would recommend something like that. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, stay away from there. Stay away from temptation. You cannot uh, fall into temptation mm -hmm. if you are not around from temptation. Remember, the Lord's Prayer says, lead me away from temptation. Mm -hmm. So if social media is a temptation, you know what I mean? Then, then remove it. Remove it. Pay the price. You know, hey, I know today everybody thinks social media is everything. It's not everything. The world does not revolve around social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, social media is all about me. That's what that's what it is. Social mm -hmm. media. And so you don't need it in order to have a good life in the 21st century. All right. And we so, lived without it for many years. We sure did. <laughs> we were fine. Yeah. So definitely. But very good question, and definitely those are those are very uh, very difficult. Uh, things and, and these are through. practical things that we can do to help you know um, God is ultimately the the healer he is the one that restores and um, but are there things that we do can do in the natural absolutely and so we have to do our part too um, here's a question um, this person is dating um, what if they're on totally different stages in life and it's kind of affecting the, the, the relationship. Um, doesn't know if whether it'd be best to maybe go their separate ways at this point, um, but they understand that's a very difficult decision to make. So, you know, somebody's in a relationship, they want, you know, it doesn't look like they're on the same page as far as like maybe on the stage of life, mm -hmm. um, you know. You want to start there? I mean, that's, that's a tricky question. Um, be, we're, we're not sure what necessarily... In what way are they right. in different stages? And it is, you know, I would always say, talk to the person and ask them, like, where do you see our relationship going? Is this, you know, uh, something that you see in the long run? Are you just stalling or, you know, uh, because, you know, Rudy and I, we dated for three years and there's nothing wrong with dating for a while, you know, and not getting married right away. And, 
I think that it's, you know, you're getting to know each other during different seasons, and that's very important. I need to see you in the rough times, and I need to see you in the good times, so I know what I'm getting myself into. So, but as far as, like, and there, I do believe that we were on two different seasons at, at a time where mm -hmm. you weren't ready to get married. I, of course, I think every female is ready. Like, after a year, you're just like, are we going to get married? Or am I wasting my time? <laughs> I don't have time for this. You know, especially if you're a little older, you just, you, you, you don't want to wait in a sense um, and that's when you have to this is where your relationship with God comes so like imperatively because God will let you know if this is the relationship that he has called you to be in or if it's just a relationship of happenstance uh, he will give you the peace and he will let you he will guide you because even in the season when we weren't committed committed I still had peace in my heart that I was not in this relationship in vain, in a sense. I believed this was someone that I would eventually marry. And I was just hoping that God would do a quick, 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 quick work in him. <laughs> and it still took two, three, three years. But uh, it's still, that is not a bad thing, you know? I mean, I'm definitely going to say. So I, 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 would, I would say this, when, when dating, uh, a huge factor that a lot of people leave out is the compatibility factor. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means is, are you compatible? Are your value systems that you grew up with similar or the same? Mm -hmm. uh, are your dreams similar? You know, is one of you, you know, maybe one of you has high hopes, high aspirations, you know, to do good, you know, great things, and the other person, ah, you know, I kind of just, I'm good, you know, where we're at, you know? Mm -hmm. That's very different, two very different uh, approaches to life. You know, how do you approach children? You know, what is your outtake on children? You know, one of you may want uh, one child, the other one wants five. One doesn't want children, one would love to have a big family. Mm. Those are compatibility factors and those will make the biggest difference when in a relationship. Uh, how you view money, you know, do you view money as, uh, you know, one of you views it as, hey, you know what, frugal. Don't spend, don't spend, don't spend, just save, 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 save. And, and the other person is, is more free and, and they just love to spend and save is not a part of it. Well, that's gonna create tension, it's gonna create, and, and it doesn't mean you can't work through those things, uh, but there's gotta be some kind of uh, yielding to one another, mm -hmm. uh, but compatibility. So in regards to the stage of life, uh, you have to look at that, you know what I mean? Where are we, you know, where am I going? Where's this person going? Are we compatible? Because you may not be, and you may be, going in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. And you know, the scripture talks a little bit about that in regards to our faith, is that uh, do not be uh, unequally yoked mm -hmm. with unbelievers. And what that means is that it's a compatibility factor. You know, mm -hmm. see, if one person has faith in Christ and wants to pursue Christ, mm -hmm. and the other person, that, yeah, they're kind of casual about it, you're growing apart. Even though you may be together, you're growing apart. And so, so a key factor in any relationship, whether you're single or you're dating right now, mm -hmm. or you're thinking about getting married, is compatibility. Yeah. Look at the compatibility. You know, don't, 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 don't just look on the surface at whether you're attracted to that person or not. Uh, compatibility is huge. So I definitely I, 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 I ask you to consider those things. Absolutely. Here's another question, and, and, and I think a lot of couples have questions like this, and is um, what is our opinion in regards to, uh, you know, kind of like, privacy in a marriage. For instance, um, if a spouse doesn't think they have to share their social media passwords or accounts or their phone and, um, you know, feels that it's kind of something that, well, you know what, I have my phone, you have your phone, I have my social media accounts, you have your social media accounts and, and you know, we should leave it that way. Um, so I'll let you, 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 you got a little little something <laughs> so go ahead you why don't you spouse, start right yes yes they're a married couple okay you're a married like couple this. and you yes. think privacy is like these are my information this is my business not your business and so no that is incorrect <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is correct <laughs> that is incorrect yeah no it, there is no more privacy you are one you know if you want privacy maybe go to the bathroom that's where it ends you know because Everything else, <laughs> and some of that doesn't even end sometimes. <laughs> Everything else is open game, you know, and, and this is just the commitment that you made to your spouse is I'm open to you, you're open to me. 
you know my world, I know your world, our world is together. And so um, I would be concerned if, you know, if you were to come and say, no, I don't want you to be in my phone at all. Like, well, why not? <laughs> like, what, what is the big deal? What is the problem? You know, we exchange phones all the time. I give him my phone. Hey, can you go check that? Hey, and he gives me his phone. To me, that is just openness and it helps us to trust one another and it keeps us accountable. Um, and I think that's important. Yeah, I think exactly what you said. When, when, when you get married, that there is, you're one now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what that means is that uh, what's yours is mine and what's mine is yours. And that's in regards to finances, that's in regards to goals, that's in regards to your possessions, debt, mm -hmm. you know, everything. What's mine is yours Good and what's yours everything. is mine. Yes. And, 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 and so it's very important that there is no secrets, uh, that there is no, um, you know, you're still individuals, you know, we're still individuals, you know, you're still Anne-Marie, I'm mm -hmm. still Rudy, you know what I mean? But when it comes to the marriage relationship, no, there's no... There's no secrets. Mm -hmm. There's no privacy. Mm -hmm. In a sense, there is no, hey, no, you can't look at my stuff. I can't look at your stuff. That violates trust. Mm -hmm. And so um, so it has to be open, as you said. It's got to be open communication. Uh, you, you both have to have access, you know what I mean, to one another's accounts uh, without any kind of hold back or reservation. And so definitely encourage you to move in that direction. Uh, it, it, the, the relationship will not be healthy. Uh, either one of you is not going to be happy or neither one of you is going to be happy or fulfilled if you're holding information back. It will cause tension, it will cause conflict, it will cause problems, and you will not have rest in your home and you will not have a, a good, healthy relationship. So open up, open up, no secrets, no privacy, you know, share with one another. Mm -hmm. What's yours is mine, what's, you, what's mine is yours. This is gonna be really specific. Can a marriage ever be repaired after infidelity, after unfaithfulness? And 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 the answer to that or, or the is yes, it can. And uh, you know, we, we've seen many marriages uh, who where there was unfaithfulness that occurred, where the marriage has been restored mm -hmm. and healed, and the couple has been able to move forward and build from that infidelity, from that season of unfaithfulness and have a stronger, more vibrant marriage. And God wants that because God is always for the marriage. Mm -hmm. And, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Uh, whenever there is a, a violation of, of unfaithfulness, it, 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 it creates very profound, deep wounds mm -hmm. in the person who, who was hurt. And, and, and that needs to be healed, one, by God. So we need to open up our heart to God and say, God, heal me of this major offense and hurt mm -hmm. and then also the one who committed the act of adultery has to work very hard mm -hmm. to earn that trust and faith from their spouse again mm -hmm. and that means that you have to go above and beyond to re-earn that trust and you can do it you can do it the same way by asking God for help with God all things are possible you go to God and you say, God, I messed up. I sinned. This is exactly what David did. When David sinned against God, when he sinned against his wife, uh, the scripture says that David ran back to God and said, Father, I have sinned against you. And he said, Lord, create in me a pure heart and a steadfast spirit in me. In other words, David was saying, I messed up. I sinned. I hurt you, God, and I hurt my spouse. I hurt my family, but I want to make it right. And so he went to the source that could help him. And he said, God, help me to restore what I have, where I have failed. And God did. God restored it. And, and God can do the same thing in your life. Um, but it become, you, you have to come to God. And I would say this, that the person who did the violation, uh, you have to pray for yourself, ask God to help you. You have to pray for your spouse, ask God to heal your spouse's heart. Mm -hmm. And then ask God to help you to re-earn that trust. And it takes time, yeah. you know, it doesn't happen quickly. It takes time, keep seeking God, keep praying on both sides, you know. You gotta be patient with it, patient with one another, uh, but keep taking the right steps in the right direction. I can assure you of this, that if you make it your commitment 
to restore the marriage and ask God for his help, he will help you. Mm -hmm. and, and if you will do your part, God will do what you cannot do. He will. And he will restore what was broken. And he can make that marriage stronger than it ever was before. Uh, so here's another question. Um, you know, my spouse works a lot throughout the week and uh, on the weekends kind of wants to go hang out uh, and as a male wants to go hang out with his friends and um, and less time at home you know with the spouse and, and, and the family um, you know what's what's a good balance there well that's the key is it is it has to be balanced and so there has to be the time where they get to go and you know step away just as as much as the wife needs to have her time and you know give that you know time of you know re relaxation or whatever i think that there has to be a balance so it can't be an every night thing there has to be some compromise and say okay let's look at our week let's look at this together and let's see what works for both of us yeah you go out with your friends this day i go out with my friends this day but then there's also got to be a weekly date night and for those of us with kids we know that's probably the hardest thing to ever do um, is to have a date night because who's gonna watch the kids make the sacrifice that you need to make your marriage a priority and it has to be the priority it cannot be second or third or you know it has to be a priority for your health for your relationship to be healthy and for your your family to be healthy and so there has to be a balance yes can the husbands go out yes can the wives go out but not every single night. It has to be like, you gotta make the balance. You said the key word, and it's priority. It's first things first. Uh, if you work, you know, um, first things first, the priority is the spouse, okay? The priority is your marriage. If you're married, your priority is your wife, and your priority is your husband. Mm -hmm. and, and then everything else comes after that. And so, so if, you know, if you've been working all week long, um, you, there has to be priority for the spouse. You know, first meet those needs and then ask if it's okay, schedule if it's okay to go and do something, you know, with, with my friends or my family uh, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, and those, are, those are healthy patterns in a relationship. You can do those things, but you got to meet the needs of your spouse first. Yeah. The priority is first your spouse, first your kids, and then if you have children, and then everything else. And so as long as those needs are being met, you'll notice that that tension will begin to disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, there won't, everybody will be at peace, you know. If I prioritize you and, and our family and you see that and you feel that, then you won't have a problem with me going to play basketball, mm -hmm. with me going to, you know, to go, go do something. You know, you, you're not going to... You're not gonna fight that. You're not gonna get mad at that. As long as I could take a nap here you know? and there, I'm good. Yeah, and if you can have that time, then that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but so as long as the priority is there, it, it, it's uh, that's the number one thing. Yes, priority. It's priority. Yes, mm -hmm. priority. Here, here's a here's a, a a good question. That uh, why do I push away the love that's being given to me? Mm. Uh, I can't seem to accept it without getting frustrated that I'm not loving just as enough in return. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I can tell you personally, I can relate with that question so much with both of those, that question, those thoughts. And I know that, that you can, because I know that in our relationship, especially in the early stages of our relationship, I felt exactly uh, like this question. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was that, that when, in our early stages of our relationship, Anne-Marie had so much love and she shared that love with me. Uh, but I became very frustrated in the relationship because I couldn't reciprocate that love to her. I couldn't give it back to you. And that was very frustrating to me because it's not something that I didn't want to do. I wanted to do it, but I couldn't seem to do it. And, uh, but this is what we came to find out. What we, what we learned is that I, I, was, I was struggling to love you back because my own heart had not been healed yet. Mm -hmm. And so the wounds and the scars of yesterday, uh, in a sense, had my heart pretty cold and damaged. And, but the good news was that I was already, I had already began a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And so Christ was already at work. 
and he was beginning to heal my heart. Yeah. And, and that is essential. And that's one of the amazing things about a relationship with God mm -hmm. is that God will heal your heart so that you can love. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I know that's one of the, part of our story, part of our testimony is that God healed my heart so that I could love again. Mm -hmm. And it was relationships that had damaged my heart. And, but it was God, my relationship with Christ that healed my heart that helped me to love again. And so, go to God. Mm -hmm. The relationship with Christ. Ask God to heal you of those hurts. Tell whoever you're in a relationship with that, that you do have those feelings for them, but that you're having a hard time showing it or expressing it. Mm -hmm. um, but just so that, you, so that you can let them know that you do, that you are thinking about it and you do feel this, this love for them, but you're having a hard time. Maybe be patient, asking for that patience. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's definitely hope. Uh, God can heal. God can, can heal your heart and help you to, to love again. Mm -hmm. All right, great question here. Uh, what is a, a good strategy to use for one spouse who doesn't speak up or express themselves and maybe bottles those things up inside? And for the other spouse that maybe, you know, uh, lets too many things out into the open and, and, and can express themselves very well. So what do you think is a good strategy in a relationship like this? Well, you know, it, it depends on if it's like a, an argument that you just had, I definitely would say take a breather, especially for the one who expresses themselves uh, pretty quickly and just let things fly out of their mouths um, because you need a little bit of time to decompress and so that you can filter better what's coming out of your mouth because what the words damage and, you know, you don't want to s express things in a way where it's going to you know, damage the relationship or, or the person that you're in a relationship with. Um, for the ones who doesn't express themselves, I would definitely recommend writing it out, uh, writing a letter or texting it. Um, maybe they just didn't grow up in a house where people expressed themselves openly or they never saw their parents, you know, openly express their feelings. And so it could be something that was just passed down to them. They just could be an introvert or a shy person. So I would say, write it out. Um, it is better to let that out than to keep it in because if you don't ever acknowledge it or express it, it won't heal and it won't get better. So, you know, text it out, write it out. And then I, I love what you said this past Sunday about creating a safe place um, for open communication. That, I believe, is profound uh, because it's, a, it's important that we both feel like we're heard important that we both feel like we're safe here that you're not attacking me and I'm not attacking you and that the goal of this discussion is for us to win mm -hmm. in our relationship and so when those are the goals when those are the things then I can feel safe coming to you and like me letting you know hey I was bothered by this this and this and that, and that and then I would feel comfortable with you coming to me and saying look I was bothered by this this that and that, and that. And, and so it's a safe place for, for that open communication where I'm, I know I'm not gonna get bashed, I know I'm not gonna get criticized, I know it's not to tear me down, but just to help our relationship grow. So texting, you know, writing it out, and for the other person who just whoop, board vomits, doo -doo -doo -doo, take it back in for a second, decompress a little bit, and then really, literally, watch the words that come out of your mouth. <laughs> You know, sometimes we just, we are watching them as they're coming out. So we need to make sure that we are like, da -da 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 -da. let me make sure that's not something I don't want to And say. I think the key there is, is one of the relationship goals that we talked about in the message this past weekend was seek to understand each other's differences. And so, and so that's one of the things is that a lot of times in a relationship, one person is able to express themselves and communicate openly very well. And then the other person, for whatever reason, it could be background, it could be upbringing, different reasons, wiring the way their personality is, uh, they don't express themselves that well, they bottle things up. And so it's one is be patient and seek to understand those differences. Because I remember in our relationship that you know you were the one who would kind of just uh, uh, be quiet and not want to deal with something. And I was the one who's more open, more really to just communicate and express and, and just say, hey, let's talk about it, let's deal with it. And, and, and a lot of times you were like, I just want to take a nap. You, you, yeah, <laughs> just you, you, you didn't want to. You didn't yeah. want to talk about it. You didn't want to deal with it. And and, and, and to me, that was frustrating because I said, come on, let's just let's deal with it. We can, get, we can deal with it around. We can move on. Right, right. And, but again, I had to learn 
you know, my, my, my person, I had to learn that, okay, your personality is different than mine. You know, your personality is more like where you need a, a minute or you need a couple hours to kind of take it in and then we can talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, again, be patient with that. Seek to understand each other's differences. Some of the key strategies you said, you know, text, write a letter, uh, but it definitely, you gotta find a way to communicate. Uh, if you don't talk it out, you'll act it out. Mm -hmm. And so find a way to communicate. Good question. Mm -hmm. Here's a question. How important is it how others perceive our marriage? Or, you know, our marriage, yeah. I, I, I think you can go back to the scripture, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. It says, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And so there is a separation that, that, that happens when you get married. A separation from you, from your family. Mm -hmm. And now that was the priority. Now your spouse is the number one priority. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think sometimes, uh, sometimes, and I, we're, not, we're not particularly sure what, what, mm -hmm. you know, how this question is being asked as far as like who is perceiving the marriage. Mm -hmm. but, I know sometimes it could be in-laws, right? Because that's always a, a big, uh, a big challenge in a relationship, mm -hmm. is the in-laws and how they see the relationship. And you know, sometimes they have, you know, they have words to say about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, go back to Genesis two twenty-four. There's a separation that now that happened, where that family is no longer first. Now it's your family with your spouse mm -hmm. that is the priority. Right. And so, to some degree. Um, yes, it, it doesn't matter what others think, you know, really our, our audience is God right. and each other. Exactly. And, uh, and if we're at peace with God, with the choices that we're making for our marriage, mm -hmm. and we're at peace with one another, right. then th those are the most important ones. Absolutely. And yes, there can be other voices, there will be challenges for sure. Yeah. Uh, people will have their opinions and thoughts about our relationships and our marriage, and, and they're entitled to those opinions. But uh, at the end of the day, the most important one is our relationship with God. And what God thinks, you know, and, and we're living according to his word and uh, what we think about our relationship. Right, right. Yeah. Amen. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the question. Uh, what, 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 what would be some advice um, to give to a spouse who has lost a little bit of the other spouse's respect and wants to earn it back? Be consistent. Good. Um, be, be consistent with your love, be consistent with your respect, be consistent with your honor, uh, be consistent with your decisions, and keep making the right next step, the right next decision. And once she starts to see, or he starts to see that consistency, it will rebuild security, trust, um, and that may take time. But just keep being con consistent and don't give up. Keep loving, and um, but I would definitely say that is the biggest thing. Perfect, perfect word. Consistency. You can re-earn respect and trust through consistency in actions. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four through eight. God defines for us what love looks like, yeah. how love is expressed, how we express love to others. Mm -hmm. I would encourage anybody and everybody to go do, in a relationship, to go do 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not rude. Love is not selfish. You know, love is, 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 is it, uh, it, it, it bears all. Mm -hmm. Go read through it daily and do what it says there. Mm -hmm. I can assure you, you will regain your spouse's respect and a whole lot more. Yeah. It will begin to look a lot like heaven on earth in your home. And a whole lot of needs are going to be being met at home if you do it that way. Yeah. Amen. Hashtag amen. Hashtag amen and amen. <laughs> and amen. Here's a question. What if a goal of one spouse isn't something the other feels is a priority, priority or as important spiritually? So one, one spouse has a goal, uh, but maybe the other spouse doesn't think it's a you know, high priority. I would say that you would have to yield to one another. I mean, you're also obviously two different people. You have two different ideas and goals, um, but you are one family. And so right. it, it's, it is important to have unity in the goals. That's right. Because, you know, your goal may take you 
away from the family for a little while. Your goal may take a little bit more time from your family. Your goal may, you know, uh, take energy. And, and so it has to be, you know, put together in unity. Talked about. Talked about. Yeah. And I, it, I think it's, 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 trying, it's just across the line that communication has to be the forefront of everything you do in a marriage. So express to that person, hey, I feel really that this goal is important. But I think that we also... But then you have to allow the other person... To express them as well. What they feel about it. And then you got to come to a, a unified decision and be like, is this something right. we're going to pursue or not? And, and, and you have to yield to that. In a relationship, in a marriage, you yield to one another. And it's like, we have to both agree on this, on this, and, and, and move forward. So that, that's a really good question. And uh, again, it's everything you said. It, it starts with communication. Mm -hmm. all, the, all the chips have to be laid on the table. We got to sit down. Each spouse has to communicate what they feel. So one spouse has a goal. I think, you know, we should do this. And again, you're one because now you're a family. Mm -hmm. So you don't make decisions independently. Right. Uh, you know, I don't go buy a car without letting you know. I'm, think, we're, I'm thinking about buying a car, you right. know what I mean? Why? Because we make decisions together. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, you know, go get, go chase, you know, something without us talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be talk, there has to be, you know, okay, this is how it, you can say, this is how it's gonna affect our family, et cetera. This is what it's gonna require of us. It's all put right in front of, in, on paper. We know what it is. We know what the price is gonna be to chase this goal. Mm -hmm. And then there's got to be a decision that has to be made uh, corporately. You know, I think usually when you talk about it, you can come to a decision. Yeah. You know, uh, but if you can't, or if you come to a, 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 a place where you're just stalled out and you just both, it's not moving forward, I would advise this. Keep praying, keep asking God to guide you. Mm -hmm. And I would ask a, a mentor, somebody uh, ahead of you in marriage, somebody you look up to in marriage, what they think about this decision and, and and usually prayer looking to a mentor and asking some guidance about this decision will help to bring clarity to the decision and um and then and then and if it doesn't at the end of the day you know uh it, it'll come back to the head of the household mm -hmm. and the head of the household is is the male the man if he is submitted unto god you know, if, if a husband is submitted unto God mm -hmm. and he is trying his best to serve God and following the Bible, following the principles of God, mm -hmm. um, he will be accountable for the decisions that are made for the family. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually, again, if a, if a man is following God and being obedient to the Lord, um, it, it's going to be beneficial to the whole family. Amen. And it'll have God's blessing on it. Amen. Uh, what advice, you know, could we give to a couple or couples who have been stretched to a breaking point during this pandemic? Well, I can start really quickly. Number one, I think every relationship has encountered this kind of tension and, uh, and stress during this season of pan the pandemic. Uh, we've experienced it. Mm -hmm. I think I don't, no home has been uh, mm -hmm. absent mm -hmm. right from this. We've all experienced, and especially marriages, families have experienced significant pressure, significant stress. Uh, so my, my, one of my advice would be don't make any major decisions, mm -hmm. huge, uh, life altering decisions right now. Mm -hmm. I would pause on making some of those huge major life altering decisions, uh, because things are really, uh, y you might not be at your most stable place right now to make some of those life altering decisions. So that would be maybe one, one, one small advice, but. I would say make God your priority. Um, I think that this pandemic has hit everyone. It's hit the world. And it's definitely shown us whether we've been on shaky ground or whether we've been on the solid rock. Yeah. And so I believe that this season has been um, just, it's just important that we go back to the source. We have to re, you know, reprioritize our our to dos, our list of what we're doing, and it has to be God. He has to be the forefront person in your life and saying, "Okay, all right, my relationship with God, improving and growing is going to help my relationship with my spouse." 
you know, um, the vertical will help the horizontal. And so we have to go back to the Father and, and re-establish a different type of routine. If you didn't wake up in the morning to pray, then it's time to wake up in the morning to pray. You know, our whole, everything, this pandemic, ha pandemic has shown a lot of different things mm -hmm. in, in our lives. And, and I believe it's a great time to, to shift, to shift everything, you know, like, you mm -hmm. know what? I didn't spend enough time with my kids. I didn't prioritize my marriage. I did not make God the, the number one in my life. And so this is the time to do it. And this will, yeah. this will help um, whatever the enemy meant to, to harm in this season. It will help turn it around and God will use it for our good. You know, it, Jesus is the firm foundation. And this is what Jesus said in, in Matthew 7, verse 24, he said, he said that he's the rock. Mm -hmm. And he said there was a wise builder and a foolish builder. He said that the foolish builder built his, his life, uh, his house upon sand. And, and he said the wise builder built his, his house upon a solid rock that is Christ. And, and that's where we have to be building our life. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, during this pandemic, I think everybody learned a little bit more about their faith in God. You know, were, was their anchor really in Christ? How deep the roots went into the, the, the rock that was the foundation? Mm -hmm. And if you found out that, oh, wait a minute, you know, maybe they didn't go as deep as I thought they went, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now you know. And, and now you can go to work on it and dig them in a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's Christ. He's, he's the solid rock. He's our foundation. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if we're founded on the rock, uh, pandemics can come. Storms can come. Hard times can come, but we will not be moved. Uh, we, we're going to withstand and we're going to persevere. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you for the question. Awesome. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for taking a, uh, some time and, and submitting those questions. Uh, hopefully we were able to give you, you know, just some kind of insight uh, that can maybe give you some clarity or some direction. Uh, but again, thank you guys. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And, uh, you know, we love you. And, and we're praying for you, just believing that, that, that God is with you, that God can heal and restore what's been broken, and that God will make us strong and firm and help us to have those good and healthy relationships.